In this episode, we take a look at the 10-day rampage of Raoul Moat, who declared war on the police after his release from prison. Over the 10 days, there'll be three shootings, three victims, a robbery, a manhunt, and Paul Gascoigne, who turned up after a 14-hour coat bender. Gascoigne in his dressing gown convinced himself he was Moat's brother. It was all over the news and became so well known, even t-shirts were made. The manhunt would become national news across early July 2010. Day 1, Thursday, July the 1st. Raoul Moat was released from Durham Prison after serving 18 weeks for assault. Moat served his sentence for hitting a nine-year-old relative. A former bodybuilder, Moat was six foot three inches tall and approximately 17 stone and was prone to eruptions of anger. He had a young daughter with an ex-girlfriend, 22-year-old Samantha Stobart, and two other children from previous relationships. Although Moat had been arrested 12 times, resulting in charges for seven separate offences, he only had one previous conviction for common assault. Day 2, Friday, July the 2nd. Prison staff warn Raoul Moat may want to harm Samantha Stobart. Moat was inspired by the events in the Cumbria shootings which occurred one month before his rampage when taxi driver Derek Bird killed 12 people and injured 11 others in a day-long shooting spree. The saturation level news coverage of the Cumbria shootings was said to have triggered Moat. Moat held a grudge against the police who he blamed for the collapse of his tree cutting business claiming he had lost everything. While in prison his girlfriend Samantha Stobart lied to him that the man she had had an affair with and who she's living with is a police officer. A reason, because she was frightened of him and wanted Raoul Moat to stay away from her after his release. Raoul Moat later that day picks up Alexis' car and shotgun from an associate that he requested on his release from prison. Day three. Saturday, July the 3rd. Raoul Moat shoots dead Miss Stobart's new boyfriend Chris Brown outside her home in Burtley, Gateshead, and also injures her. At the time of the split, Miss Stobart claims she had entered in the affair with a police officer in an attempt to keep him away. But this fueled his rage and hatred for the law, leading to Moat blaming the police for his life falling apart. In reality, Miss Stobart has started a new relationship with a karate instructor. Chris Brown, when Moat ambushed them in Berkeley Gateshead, armed with a sawn off shotgun. The killer claimed he heard the pair mocking him as they walked home from the house the neighbours Jackie and Carl Wilkinson after a night out. He'd been waiting for an hour in his moment to strike, texting his accomplice Carl Ness, who was parked up nearby. When Chris Brown confronted Moat, Raoul Moat blasted him with a shotgun, shooting him in the chest and neck before firing once more at the karate instructor's face from close range, killing him. Moat then shot his ex-girlfriend in the stomach through the window before fleeing the scene. She was horrifically wounded, but survived the attack. Raoul Moat's accomplice, Ness, fled the scene, leaving Moat stranded. The following day, the crazed gunman called police to warn them he was about to attack and target their officers. A full-scale manhunt is launched for Moat. Day 4, Sunday, July the 4th. PC David Rathband is shot in his patrol car and critically injured after Moat drove up to him in his Lexus in East Denton. The officer had survived but was blinded by the attack. Raoul Moat claimed he would target any police officer in his wake, but PC Rathband had previously crossed paths with Moat before, when he seized Moat's van before his incarceration. Moat attempted to evade the authorities. Moat had called police 12 minutes before the shooting of PC Rathband to taunt them and tell them what he was about to do. 
he did so again 50 minutes after the shooting, during which he showed little remorse and complained to the police they are not taking him seriously enough. Police responded by saying they were taking him seriously and that his ex-girlfriend's boyfriend Brown had no connection to the police. They urged him to hand himself in for the sake of his three children. Day 5 The 5th of July Fearful of more shootings by moat, police mounted a raid with armed officers, dogs and a helicopter on a house in North Kenton and also detained a man from Sunderland, although neither found moat. Northumbria Police confirmed they received a 49-page letter, originally given by Moat to a friend late on the 3rd July, warning that they were going to pay for what they had done. The letter also stated that the public need not fear me, but the police should, as I won't stop until I'm dead. In the letter he stated that his children, Freedom, House and his ex-partner and their daughter had all been taken away from him. He admitted he had issues and he was running out of options. He said he was never violent towards his children. The police relayed a message to Moat from Stobart, through which the media urged him not to continue if he still loved her and her child. Stobart then admitted she had lied to him about seeing a police officer because she was frightened. Sam Stobart's half-sister, Kelly Stobart, 27 years old, reported he had updated his Facebook status with a hit list, which included her and other family members. He said he will take out any police that will get in his way. At a press conference on that evening of July the 5th, police revealed they believed Moat had kidnapped two men at the time of the shootings. They also requested that this information be subject to a media blackout. The day before, around 10.50pm, a fish and chip shop was the scene of an armed robbery by a man resembling Moat. In a press conference on the morning of the 6th of July, the police said they believed they had been dealing with a complex, fast-moving hostage situation. The manhunt for Moat continued. Day 6, July the 6th, Tuesday. Raoul Moat's Lexus car is discovered in Rothbury, Northumberland, and police flood the area, setting up a two-mile exclusion zone. A letter written by Moat is leaked to the press and reveals his intentions to declare war on the police. Sightings of the black Lexus IS200 SE saloon, bearing the registration V322HKX, police believed it to have been used by Moat. The car was in fact Raoul Moat's and was found near Rothbury a five mile area exclusion zone and a two mile ground exclusion zone were set up by police. And two men were found walking along the road and were initially thought to be the hostages, but were later arrested. Police also said officers from six forces had been called into the area. A large number of armed response officers were in their ranks. Armed officers and dogs stormed buildings on a disused farm called Pike House after a tip off from the landowners. They said one of the boards on the windows of the derelict building had been removed, but no suspect was found. The police repeated an appeal to Moat to give himself up and urged him not to leave his children with distressing memories of their father. Armed officers were deployed to schools across the area and pupils were kept under temporary lockdown for fear that Moat might be close by. Children were eventually allowed home. The cordon around Rothbury was lifted at approximately 9pm while armed patrols continued throughout the village. Vehicles were subjected to road checks whilst entering and leaving. All TV news stations descended on Rothbury with 24-hour coverage. Day 7, Wednesday, July the 7th. Police officers find a tent where Moat had been sleeping and another letter from him. In another press conference on morning the 7th of July, the police said they believed that Moat was still at large, most likely hiding in the surrounding countryside in the Rothbury area. 
within a tent thought to be used by Moat at a secluded spot in Cartingdon. An eight-page letter to Sam Stobart from Moat was found. In it, Moat continued to assert that Brown was connected to the police. Again denied by Detective Chief Superintendent Adamson. The police called in TV survival expert Ray Mears to help track Moat's movements. It was thought he was using sewer and drain system networks to navigate locations. At the later press conferences, police confirmed the 5th of July chip shop robbery was a positive sighting of Moat. Northumbria police offered a £10,000 reward for information that would lead to Moat's arrest. During the day, Paul Stobart, the father of Samantha, released a video appealing to Moat to turn himself in. Day 8, Thursday, July the 8th. Police say Moat made threats to the general public and two men were arrested on suspicion of assisting an offender and are bailed. The police announced on the 8th of July that two more men were arrested in Rothbury the previous day. Detective Chief Superintendent Neil Adamson of Northumbria Police said they considered Moat a wider threat to the public than they previously thought, but would not comment any further. After his initial note stating he would not stop killing police until he was dead. It was revealed that police asked the media to dampen the reporting on aspects of Moat's private life, as he had threatened to kill a member of the public every time there was an inaccurate report. At this point in time, there's public support for Al Moat, as a man who had been wronged by police, and the system that had failed him due to some news agencies portraying him as a John Rambo character from the first Blood film, of a man being pushed too far and wanted to be left alone. Day 9, Friday, July the 9th. A cordon was set up around the National Trust's Craigside Estate in the parish of Cartingdon. Northumbria Police reported they had recovered three mobile phones used by Moat in recent days. In the early evening of the 9th of July, residents of Rothbury were told to stay indoors because of a major security operation taking place. Among the manhunt of Raoul Moat, a surreal chapter involving World Cup footballing legend Paul Gascoigne. Where in a dressing gown, Gazza arrived unannounced at the police cordon as armed officers surrounded Moat. The England midfield icon had been on a coat bender and convinced himself the burly killer was his big brother Moto. He arrived at the police cordon holding a loaf of tiger bread, lager, chicken and a fishing rod. Paul Gascoigne later explained he had been drinking and snorted 14 lines of cocaine and hearing about the horrific rampage on the news, decided to try and help Moat after convincing himself the murderer was his brother. He said in his 2015 evening with Paul Gascoigne talk, you've got to realise I'm half cut, sitting in the living room. I've got about six lines lined up. I'm not realising much, but a good line and me and Raoul Moat are sort of friends. A couple more lines and we're good buddies. A few whiskies, another few lines, and we went to school together. News agencies reported that an individual resembling Moat had been surrounded by police. Food and water was reportedly brought to Moat during the confrontation and his best friend, Tony Laidler, was escorted to the scene by authorities in an attempt to persuade him to surrender. Paul Gascoigne said he was in Rothbury, and that's where I used to go fishing, so I know the area quite well. Another line, and I have a couple of fishing rods and a chicken. He's going to need a drink. I had 14 lines, and now he's my brother. Paul Gascoigne rang for a taxi and told the driver to take him to Rothbury. The taxi driver said, you're not going to where I think you're going. And I said, yes, I am. I was telling the taxi driver I could save him. I told him, listen, I have been through so much. I'm the best therapist in the world. I can save him. I genuinely believe that. Gazza brandished a box of chicken and a loaf of tiger bread as he made his arrival at the tent scene and asked stunned police, where's Moto? Paul Gascoigne was not allowed entry and told to go home bemoaning the fact his chicken was getting cold and so ended a crazy chapter 
and one I guarantee that will never appear in a film or drama series that recreates these events. At 7pm, Moat comes out of his hiding place and reporters watch as he lies on the ground with a gun. Police try to negotiate with him for six hours. Day 10, Saturday, July the 10th. In a bid to stop him, police shot Raoul Moat with a taser. He was shot with an experimental wireless long-range electric shock weapon, firing electrified rounds, which proved ineffective and failed. A gunshot is heard at 1.10am and Moat is declared dead after being rushed to hospital. Police said of Raoul Moat, the gunshot to the head was self-inflicted. responding to a question at Prime Minister's Question Time on the 14th of July regarding a particular Raoul Moat memorial page established on Facebook which attracted more than 36,500 members Prime Minister David Cameron condemned the site He told the House of Commons it's absolutely clear that Raoul Moat was a callous murderer full stop End of story I cannot understand any wave however small of public sympathy for this man There should be sympathy for his victims and the havoc that he brought to that community. There should be no sympathy for him. Facebook later responded by saying that it would not remove the site because it encourages public debate about issues in media. Facebook is a place where people can express their views and discuss things in an open way, as they can do in many other places. And as such, we sometimes find people discussing topics others may find distasteful. However, That is not a reason in itself to stop a debate from happening. We believe that enabling people to have these different opinions and debates about topics can help bring together lots of different views for a healthy discussion. Cameron later said he'll be making official complaints to Facebook. On July the 15th, the page was deleted by its creator. The people who helped Raoul Moe during the manhunt and helped him acquire his shotgun and supplies. Carl Ness, 26 years old, was given three concurrent life sentences, totaling a minimum tariff for 40 years for the murder of Christopher Brown, conspiracy to murder and the attempted murder of PC David Rathband. His friend, Corin Rowan, received two concurrent life sentences for conspiracy to murder and the attempted murder of PC David Rathband and will serve at least 20 years in jail. Both men were also sentenced to seven years for robbery and Ness was given five years for firearms offences. Carl Ness from Dudley in North Tyneside was with Moat on the night he shot his ex-girlfriend Samantha Stobart and killed her boyfriend Chris Brown, whom Ness had believed at the time was a policeman. Now look back on, he is widely regarded to the news media, Moat had become a valuable commodity, his actions trapped by millions. Following Raoul Moat's death, his estranged brother, Angus, described the media coverage as a whipping up of what could be a public execution in modern Britain. <laughs>